I've been asked to explain how I plan my fortresses, so I thought this one would be a good one to look at. I'll go through what my thought process is when I'm laying out a fortress. So the first thing to consider is how hostile is the situation? Do you have the opportunity to choose where you want to go or do you need to get underground really quickly? Now in this fortress, we've got two towers as neighbors. That's a tricky one because we don't know when we're gonna face enemies. It could be two years from now, or they could turn up within two weeks, which is pretty immediate. So I'm going to play it safe with this fortress and I'm going to get underground immediately. We're not going to move anywhere. We're just going to get underground where we are. So the next thing to think about is what's the topography? Is it going to be a flat top fortress or are we digging into the side of a mountain? This time it's a very flat land, so we're going to have a flat top fortress. So then I think about how much surface area do I need to capture? Are grazing animals going to be a big part of my fortress? And I've brought some llamas. I would like to capture a relatively large area. We don't have a volcano on this map, so... I'm going to be using wood for metalworking for quite some time. It will be quite a ways off before we get down to the magma layers and start pumping magma to use in our smelters. So it would be convenient to capture quite a large area of land on the surface, especially with this being, by the looks of it, quite a heavily forested area. But still got to bear in mind that if I try to capture too much, we might get invaded too quickly. So there's a bit of a balancing act here. The larger the area that we try to claim, the greater the likelihood that we won't get any surface at all before the first attack. So I'm going to go for an intermediate land grabber on the surface. I'd like to get a square maybe this sort of size. So the next thing is what type of fortress do I want? Do I want to do anything special with it? In my Utopia fortress that I'm playing as part of my Let's Play, I'm building little dwellings where the farms and the bedrooms and the workshops are all integrated into little homesteads. But this one's going to be a more traditional fortress where We'll have each of the industries laid out on their own floors. It's an easier way to go. It's an easier way to think about. It takes less forward planning. So with that in mind, then I need to think about what to put on each floor. So we know that we're going to need to put farms in the soil layer. I would like to go down two levels for that. Now immediately below the surface, I'm going to have the butcher and the tanner. So these are two trades that I usually have on the surface, but with the surface not being a safe place, I'm going to use the advice of a commenter, Quantum Droid, who pointed out that what you can do is put a butcher underground and channel a hole immediately above it. The workshop will then be considered to be above ground and so you won't get any miasma built up. So I'm going to do that here because it will just reduce the risks. So even if the surface is under attack, we'll still be able to use the butcher. We won't have to worry about things shooting at us. Okay, going down one. We know that there's a lot of sand on this level. So I'm going to hope that's enough sand on enough of this level to be able to build the farms. We don't need a huge amount of area for the farms, so we'll go for farms there. Underneath the farms, I'm gonna put my clothing industry and my wood industry and wood stockpiles. The clothing industry, 
uses both the yarn from the llamas on the surface and the pigtails from the farms which are both close to the top so it makes sense to have them high up and of course the wood is coming from the surface so having those two near the top is going to minimize the amount of hauling and the distance that the hauling needs to carry on below them we should be somewhere near the middle of the fortress now so i'm going to put the dining rooms and other common rooms like the temples and things on this floor the dwarves will probably spend a fair amount of time here so it's a good place to put them and then below that we'll have the trade area it's another high traffic area now i'll probably put two taverns in this fortress We'll probably, and possibly even two temples as well, will have a sort of quarantine area for visitors that's outside of our main living area. So we can still get visitors without having them in the heart of the fortress. And that will be on this floor. Below the trade, we're going to need to put our storage areas. A lot of the stuff that we will want to store, we'll be storing simply so that we can trade it. And below storage we're going to want the workshops and I'm going to allow two floors for workshops because I'm not sure how much surface area I'm going to be able to grab. I might end up with quite a narrow vertical fortress and underneath the workshops is the bedrooms. The dwarves don't spend a lot of time in bed so it's not unreasonable to put the bedrooms as the furthest point in the fortress. Each dwarf is slightly different, but they each only need to sleep a few times a season, about once a month on average, thereabouts. The children tend to spend more time in the bedroom than any others, and will probably end up having at least two floors, maybe more of the bedrooms. So I haven't decided which floors we're going to have for what thing. The next thing is to work out where the main staircases are going to be. So I want my dwarves to dig down around about here, very close to where they are. So let's go down a layer. This is a good place to do the first part of the planning. So what I want to start by doing is working out where my first staircase is going to go. Let's see. So if that's the cart there, let's say we'll have a staircase on that axis there. Because it's a flat top base, I'm going to want to an undercut. So if I was to undercut here, I could be sure that I've got solid ground above it. So this would be outside of the base. So let's just mark all of that as being outdoors. Now, is there any other sort of considerations? Well, I was thinking about maybe, for a change, having my external walls two blocks thick. That would allow me to engrave on the inside without the dwarves running outside. So that means that my corridor would be there. So next thing is, what size do I want my staircases? And I think in this fortress, we'll go for a two by two staircase. So let's put the staircase, say we'll go across there with the staircase. And that would work well if we had two by two corridors. Now, do I want this to be the corner? Or do I want this to be in the middle of one side of the base? And I think I'll make this the corner. It's always easier to design from the corner anyway. We're roughly in the middle of the map, I think. So I'll build down to the south. In which case, that means that the corridor is going to continue on over there. Let's remove that bit. Now, how do I want my corners to look? How do I want to lay out my staircases because I, I do like to put a sort of little area around the staircases like that just for aesthetics rather than any other reason that means that I would have to then put some wall on the outside and if I want a too thick wall it would have to be like that so the outside of the fortress now is gonna look like 
this. So we now know where the staircase is going to be. So the next thing that I do to work out the rest of the dimensions of the fortress, I go down to the bedroom layer. We might as well take the stairs with us. So let's start there. And with box select on, we'll go down to the bedroom layer. And let's put in the, the box and the corridors. Right now, how big do I want my bedrooms? Well, recently I was in a chat with Toady and he said that he thought that a three by three bedroom was a little bit tight. So as far as I'm concerned, it is now canon that a three by three bedroom is the minimum size for a dwarf. It's actually, as far as the dwarf's concerned, that would be way beyond palatial. But yeah, that's what I'm going for. What size walls do I want? I'm going to go for two thick walls. All of my walls are going to be too thick. And that's so that we can engrave on both sides of the walls. So that means that my first bedroom is going to be here. Then we have a two thick wall. So one wall will belong to the bedroom, one wall will belong to the staircase. And I'm going horizontally first with the bedrooms for no particular reason. I could do it vertically. And I think that's as far as I'll go width wise. So let's get the rest of the staircase in. I like doing bedrooms in either fives, groups of fives or tens, because then it's very easy for me to count how many rooms I've got just at a glance. I don't have to do any maths. Let's see, so the next staircase then is going to be over here. And that corridor is going to come down there. So let's put the stairs in. Box select on. We'll go up to the top. And so that I can see it on the surface, I'll mark the downstairs now. There is a tree in the way there, but we can at least get three of them in. Right, back down to the bedrooms. Oh, actually, I've made an error there. So the staircase will be there, so that we got the two wide wall. Okay, up to the surface. We go butcher layer, and then up, and we'll put in the downstair. While we're here, let's mark the downstair over here as well. I'm using marker only for this because I want to choose which thing my dwarves are going to dig first. Right now, how deep do I want the fortress to go? If we head down a little bit, let's remove the bed markings because we know that that's what we're doing now. And we'll put in a bit more planning. So the next bedrooms are going to come across here. I'm going to want it two away and then the corridor. And then two away and we get the next bedroom. And if we put the up downstairs to the surface, that would give us a square of that size. Is that enough? We'll have another staircase about here. We could go back one more. Are we going to have enough trees in this area? Considering that grazing animals are going to eat the saplings, I must admit I'm tempted to go one more. So let's see. So that would be there. We're going to have a staircase there. Are we risking too much? The more surface area we try to grab, the less likely we are to be able to secure it before we get the first set of undead tramps in through the area. Well, I think we'll risk it. Let's take the stairs to the surface. That means that we need to go one further up. So that means we're going to be digging a trench around a square area of that sort of size. That's quite sizable, but as long as we're careful, we should be okay. Well, we'll see. Okay. So now that we know what the outline of the fortress looks like and we know which floor's going to do what, 
The next thing is, do you have any particular considerations about security? And in this particular case, we do. It's going to be quite a while before we can be safe from the air. So I'm going to want to put in a U-Bend system. And what we can do, if we go down to the bedroom layer again, we'll pick up this staircase here and we'll drive that up to the top. We'll mark it on the surface while we're here. Not that I will dig out all of these staircases. We probably only actually need one of them that comes to the surface. So what we're going to do is we'll have this one come down. But in the first instance, we're going to isolate it. Now, which floor do we want to use for the initial storage? And I'm thinking the farm floor would be a good one to use because we're going to need to just dig big spaces for the farm plots anyway. So if we want to put the farm rooms down here, we're going to want to come down to this level, then go one below it, and then we'll, we'll stop that from going down any further. We'll dig the corridor along. We'll actually dig the users upstairs and we can change them to up downstairs at a later point. So up here, let's see, I think we'll make every staircase come out by two. We'll have a little wrap around every staircase, but we'll have corridors across that one, corridors across that one. Do I actually want corridors across the middle ones as well? I suppose so. It would make traversing the fortress easier, more efficient. Now we don't know how far in this sand area goes. So let's, let's reduce the risk of hitting stone and put the first farm plot room up here. Okay, so we are going to want to have that area reserved. And the corridor along there. Corridor down there. So we could have a little farm room like that. And yes, we will need to make this an up downstairs. Uh, sorry, well, we'll need to make that a downstairs there so we can put hatches over it. Right, so what this will do is it means that to get in and out of the fortress, You'll go down, at least in the early days, you'll go down those stairs, which will be isolated until you get to this layer here. Then there'll be a corridor that connects to an upstair. And then there'll be another set of hatches here. So if we get a building destroyer come down these stairs, they won't be able to break the hatches here because they can't break the hatches from below. Now, when we make the fortress more secure at a later point, we'll be able to change that. As long as we don't connect this staircase or this staircase to the rest of the fortress, we'll have something that is relatively impenetrable. So let's connect up that farm room. Um, maybe at a later point, we'll connect it in other spots. Uh, how big are we going to want it? Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six. Maybe I'll do two by six farm plots. Well, it'd be nice if it was relatively symmetrical, I suppose. So let's paint in the staircases over here so we can see how it's gonna look. And we can mark out as much as we want because they won't dig any of it until we actually tell them they're allowed to. Do we want to separate this into separate rooms? I mean, maybe we have some farm plots here and the farming workshops there, or maybe we have seed storage on that side. We could just leave it as one large room. Do we want to curve the corners at all? That might be nice. Well, let's, let's curve the corners. See, so we'll need to move that one up. We can always dig out more, but it's more difficult to put it back. I think we'll start off by digging that out. We'll dig out about half of this area here for the initial storage. We'll need to dig out this corridor here to the stairs. 
and of course this bit here and the bit up there. When I'm digging my trenches around the outside, I'll need to remember that there's going to be a ring around these. I don't want to risk anything becoming connected just at this point. So the outside wall is going to look like that. So now what I'll do is I'll just mark out enough that I'll be able to see on the surface where exactly I want to channel my moat. That looks like it's going to be a reasonably fancy fortress. There we go. We've got all of the staircases marked on the surface so that I'll be able to easily figure out where to channel my moat. And then underneath I've marked out where the undercut is going to come to and where the, where the trench will be dug into. Now, a couple of other things I just need to take care of before we stop is I want to make sure I don't accidentally dig out any of the words that I've put in. <laughs> so I'm just going to trim away uh, like here. It'd be all too easy to accidentally dig out those words and here. So I will probably reposition some of these words so what that does now it means I've got I don't have to go very far at all to be able to get to the stairs we'll dig out these immediately we'll we've got some temporary security in place and a temporary storage area that we'll be able to just dump all of our stuff in that we can then use that area for the farmland later and then the rest of it, I'll make up as we go along. And if you want to see this fortress as it actually develops, then I'll be embarking on this fortress in the first episode of my Let's Play series. So thank you for watching. I hope that's been useful. Bye for now.